Welcome back. It's signing day eve, and it's episode four of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Five. And guys, get ready to buckle up. Let's get buttoned up. Let's get locked in and ready to go because it's the greatest day of the year. Like when your kids, you're fired up about Christmas Eve, you're waiting for Christmas to come. This is Christmas Eve for recruiting nuts. This is Christmas Eve. Santa's coming in the morning, and you're hoping you're going to get shiny presents and not switches and coal. Uh, you're hoping for a close to this historic, historic uh, recruiting class that could be on the horizon, um, and we're not going to be able to get anything uh, done at work today. We're not going to be able to sleep tonight. The information is going to – probably dry up and we're just going to have to sit on pins and needles and wait to see where these hulking super teams sign tomorrow. We don't have a ton left on the board, uh, but we do have a lot, a lot of highly, highly rated guys out there. And we're going to talk about uh, all of them tonight. But before we do that, we want to give a shout out to Active Wealth Management uh, who is the sponsor for tonight's show. Um, Ford Stokes, our boy, big Auburn fan, good friend of mine. Uh, you can call, call you can call Ford directly. Just go on his website, um, activewealth.com. Uh, you can call him to get your own nationwide Peak 10 illustration so you can learn how you can get a 20% immediate bonus, 8% annual growth, and three and a three hundred and forty percent participation with a leading index. You can really make three point four times what this proprietary index does. Eight percent guaranteed interest each year is also way higher than a bank CD, uh, bank CD rates. Just call Ford, and he'll be able to explain all this to you way better than I can. I like numbers. Ford loves numbers, okay, and he can help hook you up. Um, visit ActiveWealth.com to learn how you can work with Ford and his Active Wealth team. You'll be glad that you did. That's ActiveWealth.com. I tell you who else Ford is so, just as excited uh, for signing day as as you, me, as as anybody. So um, let's just jump into it, guys. Um, we currently we're sitting right at number ten. So when we go to bed, when we go to bed on signing day eve, we are going to be right around number 10. And normally uh, teams don't – when you're right there, it's pretty rare to have the opportunity to jump just in way higher, way higher th than 10. You know, maybe you'll move up a couple of spots. You'll, you'll sign a guy or two tomorrow. But, but Auburn has the chance. Hugh Freeze has the chance. And he's put himself in position – that he has a realistic opportunity to close with four to five of some of the highest rated kids uh, out there, uh, possibly a, a five-star plus uh, consensus five-star guy, uh, another guy that's five-star on multiple sites, a top 100 defensive lineman, um, another top 150 offensive lineman, and then, you know, after all that said and done, you still got the crown jewel out there that's probably going to sign a little bit later. Uh, uh, one of the most electric players that's ever played in the state of Alabama. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about every single one of these a little bit later. But the perspective and understanding where we've come from. Guys, it's been a dark, dark time for recruiting. As, as, as a guy who, who uh, eats, drinks, sleeps recruiting you know that's that's just my thing and when i played ncaa uh, on xbox i'd just i'd sim the seasons and just recruit you know recruiting is is the lifeblood of college football um you you throw in new wrinkles like the portal and nil it just makes it so much more interesting so much more fun uh of a ride the ups and downs and the highs and lows are just incredible um, and we have been about as low as you possibly can be for at least five or six years. You know, it uh, Gus recruited well at times, but towards the end of his tenure, he he had to fight a lot of the will he get fired, won't he get fired, 
How many more years does he have? Is next year is last year? Is this year is last year? There was just so much uncertainty that made made it tough for him, made it very tough for him. Um, on top of that, we had struggles recruiting the offensive line. You had some, you know, bad stuff from NFL GMs and things that come out about wide receivers and and, and offensive linemen in the system, and, and you started to take a hit there, uh, coupled with you know the the f- almost firing right before the huge contract extension and then all the upheaval upheaval after the contract extension uh all the way up until his firing it just made it to where uh Auburn was slowly slowly getting to where the talent gap between Auburn and and Georgia and some of the bigger rivals was growing incrementally bigger and bigger and bigger and then um you go and you hire a guy who, by all accounts, is, is a nice guy, probably a pretty good football coach, uh, c- probably can whiteboard, out whiteboard anybody. But recruiting was just not his strong point. Brian Harson just the little things or 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 things that he could just not he could just not get done. You know whether it was the 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 relationship piece the going to the meetings going to the 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 luncheons shaking hands kissing bed the politics of it he could he just he just it, he wasn't built for it that's not what he wanted to do and that's fine he wanted to coach football he's gonna hire people to recruit and I'm I'm here to coach football and I want to do it my way and there's I you know I got some respect for that but on the flip side it did no favors for Auburn. It did no favor for Auburn, and that obviously, you know, ki- killed the it, it it accelerated the gap between us and our rivals even even greater, even greater to where you're finishing, you're happy to finish inside the top twenty. I mean, it's it's it was, you know, you go from a top ten, top twelve, pretty consistent uh, recruiting um, program to you're just happy if you can somehow get inside the top twenty. Just not where Auburn traditionally is or or ever needs to be so obviously you go through that and then the portal opens and you you sort of get obliterated by the portal a little bit you lose guys that are going to be first round picks like um Derek Pegues uh or I think it's Derek Pegues. regardless the the d- defensive tackle for for Ole Miss who was uh Gus wanted to make into a wildcat quarterback you lose guys like that you're building block guys um and then, you know, you you have a roster that is just, uh, it, it just being frank, it's one of the lower, probably in the lower fourth of the conference. Um, so we you go to you go to hire Hugh Freeze, and, and you look at Hugh Freeze, and 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 one of the biggest selling points has always been his recruiting. He can bring in the guys. He'll be able to go toe to toe. He did it at smaller schools with some of the bigger, the best recruiters out there. And nobody, no, none of those two guys I've just mentioned, Harson's the closest, had to really recruit against Saban and Kirby when they're both at the very, very top. Kirby's coming off of two national championships in a row, winning damn near 30 games in a row. Then Saban's, you know, who Saban is. Uh, you know, you're in, in the playoffs, you know, in the playoffs this year. And he's he's got us to the point where we're at a ten, uh, like right around the number ten class with a with a in striking distance with a realistic pathway to a top five, top three even uh, class. And I just think that's absolutely remarkable. I mean, the the caliber of players. I, this is what this is what people don't understand. You have to look at you can look at the ranking and you can get hung up on the ten at the moment. But when you look at the average player, top to bottom, you're talking top five in the country, not just the conference in the country, and that's that's potentially only going to get better uh, over you know over the next 24 hours. You're not adding bodies. You're not adding two stars, three stars. You're you're looking at adding top 100, top 25 players uh, to finish out the class and. It's been this year has been fun to like care again about battles. It's been fun again to win battles. Um, and it's 
I'm going to be honest, it's fun to, to, to lose some of these battles because you're in them, you know, we're in them now, you know, we're in it. And, and, and I feel like when you, when when Hugh Freeze has an opportunity to to go in home or, or or get you on an official visit, I'll go I'll I'll go up against anybody. I'll, I'll put him, I'll put him up against anybody, and he's kind of proven that so far. So, um, regardless of what happens tomorrow, uh, you got to be happy on the trajectory of this program and where we're going for the high school. Uh, the high school perspective. We're ahead already on 2025, and we're going to talk about 2025 in the coming weeks, introduce you to some of those guys and, and who we need to watch out for. But um, just the, the attention to detail when it comes to recruiting has been so refreshing uh, and, and just so much fun to see. And it's hard, it's really hard to look at it and and, and not see that the, the um, I guess, the, the pathway that we have to continually getting better um, because nobody's going to outwork these guys and and they've got Auburn's a special place and they've got a great product to sell. And uh, now you, now once you get them in, you got to do something with them and they're going to have, that's, that's one thing about a high, a high ranking class is it's going to increase your expectations. Even the, even, you know, even coming off a six and six season, it's going to increase your expectations. So I'm really hoping we, that, that they can close out strong and we can have all something to bug about uh, for years and years to come. And I, and I think we're, <clears throat> I think we're on the precipice of it happening. So who's out there? Who, who, who are those guys, you know, and, and, and how realistic actually are that are they out there that we can, we can actually pull these guys in. So, We've talked about it several times, but um, you're you're really five big. You got five targets that you're really really trying to land. Um, that's a- uh, Amaris Williams, um, L.J. McRae, K.J. Bolden, Ryan Williams, who's probably a little bit later down the road, uh, and then Cohen Eccles. Every single one of those are top 100 players. A couple of them, I think, th- three out of those four are top 20 players, and then you have. Um, Amaris Williams, who's a top 100 uh, defensive lineman. I kind of talked about this on Zach's show, but um, I think of all of those, obviously, Amaris Williams is the one you feel the best about. He's either going to – he's either going to flip to Auburn or he is a – the biggest troll of all time. Like, he is – he is – he has put in his his time to be – to troll Auburn. He has been WDE in almost every single tweet out there. Uh, one guy's asking him to come to Alabama and he's, re- you know, responding back WDE. Uh, he, he has been, uh, and, and what's funny is he seemingly came out of nowhere about three weeks ago. So, um, I've already talked enough about him, played running back in high school, unbelievable defensive lineman. Here's one of the, here's one of the big keys. One of the big battles we were really trying to, to win was with Jeremiah Beeman. Um, Jeremiah Beeman is another defensive lineman, very talented kid. He's committed to Alabama. Uh, I think the high school he goes to is called Parker or something like that in Birmingham. Birmingham kid. Um, nothing bad you can say about him. Would love to have him. Disappointed you don't get him because you got his teammate from ne- – you got two teammates next year that you want. One of them's committed already who's a beast, another defensive lineman. And then you have the number one recruit in the state – uh, cornerback Naeem offered, so you, you would love to add Jeremiah Beeman, but Jer- but Amaris Williams is f- at least fifty, if not more, uh, spaces rated higher than Jeremiah Beeman. So he's he's rated way higher uh, than Jeremiah Beeman. So what a consolation prize! You know, you miss out on that battle, and you just you just add an absolute super stud. Uh, on the defensive line, hopefully. Obviously, he's not signed yet. He's not committed yet. But that's one that you feel, you know, you feel really good about that I personally am in love with. I personally, he he could be, you know, <clears throat> he could be one of my top two or three players in the class that I'm excited about because I just think he he's, he's so athletic and so explosive and so big and physical already. Um, Athletic enough to play running back in high school that I think he could play him early, 
uh, and often and be a factor early and early in his career. So Amaris Williams is, I mean, he's special. He's special. And that could be, um, you know, that, that could be one that you, that you add right off the bat, uh, Amaris Williams, LJ McCray. I mean, those guys are both LJ McCray and Amaris Williams are both committed to Florida. Um, so not only that, not only do you land them, but it gives you the you landed them by flipping them away from somebody. I don't know. I mean, flips just did not used to happen like this. Like back, you know, not even that long ago, if you got one or two in a class, like they talked about it for a year, and all of Auburn's top commits. If you look at the most highly rated commits, other than Joseph Phillips, who was almost going to have to be it was essentially a flip because he was going to Georgia until like the week of his commitment and he and then he commit, ended up committing to Auburn but other than him like all of your top commitments are flips that's just that shows you also how behind the eight ball we were when we started this thing so <clears throat> you got Amaris Williams you got LJ McCray out there um look there's not LJ McCray does not talk a lot. He is not a um super rah-rah guy either way. He's he said the right things uh to Florida. I just don't think that we've given up on him. I don't think that that Hugh's given up on this guy. I, you know, he came on an official visit the weekend before this past weekend. Um by all accounts hit it out of the park. He was with another one of his Florida flips, Jamonta Waller. Um I feel better about him because I just feel like this Florida class is absolutely imploding. It's at, there is something going on at Florida that is not ideal. They do not have a defensive line coach. Uh, he so he does not know who is. Neither one of those guys know who their defensive line coach is. Um, there's been talk of some NIL issues. Um, and just the overall dissatisfaction people have with Billy Napier. It just almost seems, unless you're just a, unless LJ is just a Florida kid, he may just be a Florida kid. I mean, Daytona Beach is not that far from Gainesville. That's where he's from, Daytona Beach. Um, big, big Florida Gator territory, Jacksonville, all that. He's right around all of that. And that he could just be a Florida kid. And it may not matter who the coach is. If you if the if the um NIL is is comparable and I can stay home and I can go play for the Gators and, and be a legend, maybe I do that. I, it may not necessarily be may not, that may not necessarily weigh as much on him as it would, you know, the outsiders looking in. But it does not change the fact that everything that I just said is true. Their class, they just lost another kid. Um, a big safety, like a, a a top safety that flipped to uh, Texas. Um, there's there was rumors that they were going to lose their quarterback, DJ Lagway. I think they ended up saving him from Texas A&M. But there's just a lot of upheaval, and it would not shock me if uh, I think we finished number two in his recruitment anyway. I think we were his number two school when he committed to Florida. So you sort of see one program that's sort of going on the downslide quickly uh, and then one team that's going the opposite way. you got – in Florida also, you got kids going in the portal left and right. So just tons of uncertainty there. Um, I'm hoping that we can ride that wave with the, the trajectory that we seem to have, you know, regardless of the record, the class that we're building, the excitement um, that, that we're sort of building. Does he want to be a part of something, you know, incredibly special? Uh, kids like that, that that stuff sort of infectious to them. Um, they want to get, they want to be a part of something great. Want to be a part of something special instead of maybe, you know, just being part of a, a forgettable, a forgettable signing signing class after it's all said and done because of all the, you know, drama and everything that surrounds, uh, everything that surrounds Billy. Um, you know, some people like to call him G5 Billy. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what ha happens with that one. He's a freak too, man. He's a uh, he's a tall, uh, long, powerful franchise defensive tackle. I mean, to franchise inside defensive lineman, you're talking Derek Brown. Derek Brown style, Derek Brown size, Derek Brown length. 
he's got to gain a little bit of weight to get to that full uh, Derek Brown potential. But that's what you're talking about. You're talking about your a franchise, franchise guy that you will never see longer than three years. <laughs> You'll never see this kid his senior year. He is going to be here three and done, and he's going to be, you know, potentially a first round pick. Like he's that, he's going to be that good. He's just going to be, he's going to be that, he's just going to be a freak. He's going to be that good. So he's on the board. You don't, it's hard to catch a read on him, like I said, because he's so quiet, but he's definitely somebody that's out there that we're trying to close with. The curious case of KJ Bolden. I've said for weeks now, something's up at Florida State. Um, I think they're they've written a lot of checks they can't cash. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Call me, call me out. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to do, you're going to see. I think you're going to see it. I think they're writing checks they can't cash. Um, a lot of folks are starting to look around. A lot of folks are jumping into the portal, um, and. I'm not going to be shocked if if KJ's one that um, is also wanting to you know look around and, and, and you know he's from Atlanta, uh, Georgia is is coming after him hard late. Obviously, we're not giving up. Um, he's friends with a lot of these guys. They they're talking. You know, do we want to? You know, KJ, do you want to come be a some be a part of something special? We're we're telling him we want to throw him the ball. We want him to play defense. We want to get him touches on offense. Everything possible. This kid is just that special to get him in the class. And I and I really think there's a at least a a, a fairly good chance that Auburn could land this guy. Um, and I think he would be somebody you could be. Um, looking at again that that's not going to be here longer than three years. It's going to walk into our secondary and start day one. Uh, again, we just don't have that. It's it's hard to really remember like a uh, just a big time. I guess a big time factor at safety, uh, five star safety type recruit that we that we maybe ever had. Maybe five star DB in general. Uh, from the high school ranks, it's hard to really pinpoint one that we've had. Uh, we've we've could possibly we've we've landed, and, and this could be your guy. This could be your guy moving forward. Um, he brings a lot of fanfare. He brings a lot of um, eyeballs. He brings a lot of um, potential for twenty twenty five and beyond. Boy, would we like to have a Buford pipeline? It's they turn out studs left and right. It would be great to to sign a uh, sign a child out of Buford. I mean, they they just continually, continually put kids out, and uh, it would be great to have KJ Bolden, a very influential kid, um, a very influential kid, uh, part of this class. So, again, here we are. Here we are. You got a kid, another possible five star flip. Uh, that's very, very much so uh, on the table. Um, Cohen Eccles, look, two weeks ago, I would have told you that he would have already been committed by now. He decommitted from Texas A&M. Um, all signs were pointing that it it was probably going to be Auburn. That was we, – we I think we probably finished somewhere around number two in his recruitment. We were on him immediately. We had the relationship. I think we got him in town. Um, things were looking really good, and then it just sort of came to a screeching halt. Um, he didn't com- he didn't he didn't commit publicly to Auburn. Um, it kind of seemed like it was going to be one of those signing day or after uh, type decisions. And the longer it went without there being like a word that he was going to come to Auburn, the the I guess the 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 confidence fell. The, the longer it went, the confidence fell. And we're talking like again, Cohen Eccles, interior offensive lineman uh, from Katy, Texas. Um, and this past weekend, he went to LSU. Who, mind you, has five offensive line commits already. <laughs> Boy, would love to have you know one of those. And you know, we'll talk about. I, I think there's a lot of reasons why you're, the you know offensive line is clearly one of the weaker. Um, weaker positions on this in this recruiting class as great as it is offensive line is probably the weakest 
we'll talk a lot about the re, why I think the reasons are behind this as as time goes on, maybe on Thursday as we do like a signing day recap. But regardless, um, regardless, as time went on and he didn't flip, you feel less and less confident. And I'm going to be honest, I don't feel great. Um, I don't feel great about um, Auburn landing this kid. Uh, as bad as we need him, there's no team – in the in the running that needs him worse than Auburn, um, LSU, like I said, has five commits. Uh, Texas A and M, I'm just not real sure that um, that's the that you know that's the home state school. Um, there's nobody that that would that, again. There's nobody that needs him worse than Auburn. Does that play in? Does that play in towards down the, down the stretch? Does that play into the decision? Do I go stand in line or do I go where I know these cats need me? <laughs> I know these guys need me. I, I know they're going to take care of me. I know I have an opportunity to play um, early. I know I have the opportunity to play often. Um, and I watched a guy flip this offensive line room in production from last year to this year that was pretty incredible. And what Jake Thornton did with this offensive line uh, was absolutely incredible. I thought we were very formidable. We took two very physical football teams um, in Georgia and Alabama and punched them in the mouth and ran the ball on them. You know, what happens when you bring in some some uh, some talent on the outside that can help you throw the ball down the stretch the field? You know, instead of just having to continually – have to play perfect and pound people in the face. Like that's got to be impressive to a, to a Cohen Eccles as far as the trajectory of where he could be um, in this offense. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping that down the stretch, that's what he sees. And that's, you know, what ultimately plays into the decision, because I think, you know, the money's going to be close. The money's going to be close everywhere. And so if, 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 if the money's close, like you got to go to the place where, um, I feel like you, you from there you just got to go to the best fit and the best uh, you know you know the best the place that's going to put you in the best pl- uh, position to play um, pro- early and be developed and it's just really hard it's really hard and I'm sure I'm bugging and looking through this with orange and blue glasses but it's really hard to if you once you if you take nil out of it it's really hard to see how Auburn's not the best fit for this guy. It really is. It's really, it's really, really hard. I mean, you basically got your partner in crime, DeAndre Carter, who's going to be a top player who you're going to have to tase him to keep him off the field early. Uh, you got him at one guard. You could have uh, Eccles at the other guard. I mean, just talk about a tag team of, of, of beef in the middle that can just move bodies. Um, I'm hoping, got fingers crossed, because he's important. You know, there's a stigma around offensive line recruiting in Auburn, and even adding Eccles is not going to completely cure that because of it's only two guys. You know, it's only two guys. Um, so that one's going to be interesting to watch. He will not sign on signing day. Um, it could possibly leak where he's going to sign, but his plan is to announce on Friday, uh, which is his birthday, the 22nd. So. If signing day is gone and come come and gone, and he's not signed. Don't worry, he's not planning on signing on early signing day. Um, this is an early signing day preview, but I would be remiss if I did not um, talk about uh, what could be historically one of the most important recruits to Auburn's, uh, I guess, football trajectory from henceforth. Uh, if you were somehow to pull it off and land a Ryan Williams. Um, I don't have to say much about Ryan because everybody knows who he is. Even people that don't follow recruiting that much know who he is. They know how explosive. They know how important he is. They know his dad played at Auburn. Uh, They know the connection there. They know he's been in Alabama commitment for a long time. They know he's been – like Mr. Football for two years in a row. I, I'm, I'm not. He may not be. It, it'd, it'd be crazy if he didn't win it again this year. He won it as a sophomore, uh, a uh, MVP in the state championship game last year. If they win this year, he's the MVP again. 
Um, he's just unbelievable. He's done everything you can possibly do at the high school level. Um, reclassifies, and he already gets invites to Alabama, Mississippi All Star Games, the Under Armour All Star Game, um, and he is somebody that it's been pretty clear that Nick Saban has dedicated everything he possibly can, can to get this kid, to get him committed, and then to keep him. He wants this guy just as bad as anybody. Maybe I, I don't know that I can remember a recruit that I feel like Saban has been so passionately after and so passionately uh, has put so much emphasis on as Ryan Williams. I really, really can't think of one. Maybe, you know, maybe a Julio Jones uh, when he first, when, when whenever, um, you know, he first was on the, you know, started recruiting when he first got hired, maybe a, a Julio Jones. But even with Julio, he didn't recruit Julio all the way back as like an eighth grader or a freshman. He's been, he's been recruiting Ryan Williams ever since Ryan Williams has been old enough to play varsity football. And Auburn, you know, with the transition that we had, Hugh has had to dig himself completely out of – it's not even a hole. It's an absolute – out of an avalanche, out of a cave, out of a trench that's just miles deep. He's had to work his way out of that. And it's hard to say if Ryan is – is just really enjoys the recruiting process or not, but he sure does enjoy being in Auburn. He sure does enjoy being around Hugh Freeze. Just the other night, so he's he's here the the Sunday before, you know, before signing day. Even though he doesn't necessarily plan to sign, um, he doesn't necessarily plan to sign tomorrow. He's here right before the dead period. He's on Instagram lives talking with, uh, you know talking with um, other football players and they're taking questions and having a blast. And then there's, he's in the uh, football facility and he's FaceTiming Walker White. Like he, there's video, you know, Malcolm Simmons is video and Perry and Cam Thompson, I'm sorry, Perry Thompson and Cam Coleman racing. And then he pans over and Ryan Williams is sitting down talking to Walker White. So, Though all those guys ha have really hit it off, and Hugh has facilitated that, and like the 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 magnitude of pulling something like that off would be something that would be talked about around college football. It would be something that you would they would talk about from whenever he signs, whether it's in February or you know tomorrow, which I don't think is going to happen, which would be a complete shock. It it will be talked about until that kid steps onto the football field by by everybody. We're not just talking about Paul Feinbaum. We're not just talking about Cole Kublik. We're not just talking about, you know, the jocks in Birmingham. We're talking nationwide. It would be talked about. And it's fun to finally be – it's fun to finally be at a point where you feel like that could – it could actually happen. And I think – um, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be nerve-wracking. But if you can get Ryan Williams, you complete the freeze five. Um, I love the scenario. I'm a big Marvel guy. I love the scenario Cam Coleman said. You know, you got four of the Infinity Stones. You just need one more. You just need one more. And then Thanos can take over. And that's what that, – that was the analogy that he gave. And, and I, I love that because you got – you know, you got Perry Thompson. You got Cam Coleman. You have two unbelievable other wide receivers, Malcolm Simmons and Bryce Kane, who just got incredible bumps in the rankings. Malcolm Simmons went up like over 150 spots. And then you got Bryce Kane. You got three for sure top 175, top 150 – I'm sorry, four top 175, top 150 receivers. Then you have two top what? top 30 receivers, one that's like the number six player in the country, and then you add Ryan Williams, and that would be the number 12 player in the country. It would be it would be incredible. I mean, you just think about those guys lined up. You have Perry and you got Coleman on the outsides, and you got a Ryan Williams beside one of those in the, in, in the slot. 
uh, and then you got uh, a Simmons or a Kane on the other side. Like, who are, who are you going to cover? You remember when you saw like Jerry Judy and Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Devontae Freeman, and the small guy from Texas who's at Miami, Jalen Waddle, and they would do rock, paper, scissors to figure out who's going to score on the next play. Like, this, this group could be better. This group could be just – they're, they're higher ranked uh, as a whole – could be just as good uh, as that that crew, which would be just I can't. I mean, I can't even imagine. Like you could, I could be back there playing quarterback. Like you could have anybody back there playing quarterback. They're going to make you look good. They're going to make you look better. So it's fun times, man. It's it's a lot of fun, um, and we'll have to see how it plays out. Right now, I think you stand a really good chance to get three out of those five. I'm not going to say who. Uh, I think you stand a really good chance. I would be shocked if you didn't get three out of those five. I'm just going to say that. I'll be shocked if you did not get three out of those five and you got a very good chance, you know, to maybe get four out of five. And then if you get five out of five, you're talking the number two class in the country. I don't think you can get over Georgia unless Georgia loses another two or three players. Um which they could afford because they have 28 or 27 commits. But but yeah, you're pro if you get all if you go five for five, which I think is very, very low chances, you're talking number two class in the country, which would be pretty, pretty special. But I think we're gonna end up with it, you know, I think we'll get maybe three out of those five, and you're looking at somewhere around the, you know, somewhere around the four or five, number four, number five class in the country, which I'll take it. I'll take it. And I think you'll be right around one, two, or three, maybe two or three in average average player ranking because we're still not going to have a, the huge class. We're still that, that's You add five because you're going to lose. You're still going to lose one, um, possibly, and, and you could possibly lose two guys to make room for these guys. So you're talking 23 maybe, 22, 23 spots. So you're not going to have the 28 that you can spread out for all your points, but but you're still going to have a top to bottom, just an absolutely incredible, incredible class. One and and this is something three of our three of the guys that we have in this class, linebackers, Demarcus Riddick, um, Barber, and uh Joseph Phillips are all here and practicing during bowl practices. I don't know when that's happened ever. I think uh, I, I asked this question. I think uh, Kenny Britt or um, Britt, uh, linebacker, uh, several several years ago that's, that played in the NFL. I think he's the last one that 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 was he, that possibly enrolled early in practice and bowl practices. You got three linebackers, a position that you really need, um, are here. They're essentially going to get two springs. Like I'm. T- it's just, man, this class is just special. It's just absolutely special. It doesn't matter if you don't sign anybody tomorrow. It's not going to happen. But if you don't sign anybody tomorrow, this class is still just incredibly special. And I'm just – I'm fired up for the future. I'm fired up to see what happens moving forward. Uh, and we're just going to keep rolling. 2025 has already got multiple commits, and it's just going to hammer down uh, from there. So let's buckle up. Let's uh, Let's get prepared. Let's prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Stop with the I don't see it happening. Stop with the I'll believe it when I see it. Stop with the oh, I just don't want to get hurt again because it's still going to hurt. And it's okay. It's okay if it hurts. Just bug through it. Bug, just have fun with it. Because what you're doing when you say stuff like that is you're 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 trying to pretend like you're going to convince yourself that if I don't believe in it, it's not going to hurt as bad. It's still going to hurt. And that's 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 the fun part about recruiting. You're going to win, you're going to lose, and it's going to be fun the whole time. So everybody be prepared. I think we're in for a historic day on Wednesday and uh tomorrow and I and I personally I personally can't wait. All right, moving on. Portal probs. Um I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there's still so much more to talk about with recruiting and, and, and the portal still got so much more time, but there there's a lot of griping early and some of it, I understand. Um, some of it, I understand. 
Uh, we seem to be a little bit slow on on needs in the portal. I think a lot of people see the offensive line. Hey, we've got to add some offensive linemen. We've got to add some defensive linemen in the portal, at least two each. Uh, are we gonna are we gonna have some issues? And so far, you've added uh, what I think is going to be a very a very very good wide receiver who could play inside or out. And you've added a what I would call a rotation a rotational piece, a depth piece on the defensive line, and that's it. You've and, and you've seemingly missed on several offensive linemen. And I can't say that that's not true. I can't say that we haven't. I think there's several guys that we would have taken commits with that went on visits and got, um, I'm going to say, overpaid, overvalued, um, and they took they, you know, they jumped on it. They jumped on it before we could really talk to them, before we could really build a relationship. And last year it was not that way. Last year, several guys went on multiple visits. We still had some guys we missed on early. You had a Ben Scott you know, who went to Nebraska, who um, signed financial aid papers with us that we thought was was ours, came on a visit, signed financial aid papers, then went to Nebraska. And there was a couple more that you thought you possibly had, and then they, they, they you know, they went elsewhere. And then you got Dylan Wade on Christmas Eve. You got Gunnar Britton around January, early part of January, and you ha- ended up having a really, really good offensive line. Now, the thing that I want to say about the portal and why I don't think there's an issue is because up until now, when you look at the top recruiting teams in the country, you're talking one through five. Right now, Florida's still in that, but they're sliding back. You've got a total of three portal commitments between those five teams, and all of those are for Florida, who's losing top players at the positions they have committed in the portal, defensive line, uh, and elsewhere. So what what does that mean? What are you saying when you say that? There there is so many resources and so much time being poured into building this high school class that I think that we really need to see what happens on Wednesday before we go pull – you know, an FSU and make promises that we can't keep. We make, um, you know, deals that we cannot uphold or, or express that there's kids that have certain values that we're maybe not sure that we can fulfill uh, when you have all these top level kids in high school that, that you're trying to pursue and you're trying to close with. So I would just say, I would just say to be a little bit patient uh, in the portal. I still think there's going to be more players to go in, and we're not done recruiting the portal. I think you're about to get two big, big, uh, big portal commitments. I'm not ready to talk about who they are, but if you've been paying attention, they they visited recently um, that <clears throat> we could move on, and they could happen as soon as maybe shoot – you may throw them in there to sign, uh, announce their signing like you do um, the high school guys. They can the portal guys can sign anytime. The, another key about the portal is that they can sign at any time, but nothing is binding other than the school. So until the kid enrolls into that school. So for example, I can sign with Auburn today. I can sign the paperwork today. If as long as I haven't enrolled, that's not binding to me, but it's binding to Auburn. So I have, I've guaranteed a scholarship with Auburn, but I can go wherever I want to go. So some of these guys that have committed, they're off the board. Doesn't necessarily mean they're off the board. Doesn't necessarily mean that we couldn't go back and talk to them again. They couldn't visit as soon as the dead period's over. So I I don't want to give up on the portal yet. I don't think it's over yet, and I think we're going to be really, really happy with, with the class that we pull in out of the portal that's going to fill a lot of needs. And I think it's going to be really cool to see that we may not need as much as we think we do. With the guys that we add, I think we're going to see we may not necessarily need as much 
as we think we do. And and the big key, the big thing that we'll see, you know, I, more more years down the road is is building it through high school better than building it through the portal. I think traditional traditionally it's gonna it's high school and and Hugh believes that and you know in order to do that you're going to have to um, you know you're going to have to you're probably not going to be able to react in the portal as quickly as as some of the other schools like in Arkansas like a Texas Tech like an Ole Miss who's outside the top twenty in recruiting who you know they don't have a lot of nil committed to these high school kids so they can splurge in, uh, in the portal they can go get these guys so again let's be patient uh let's see how the dust settles after we sign this what i think is going to be a historic class uh for auburn and then uh once we can do that we can recalibrate reorganize our board hit it and when these new guys go in the portal that's all you necessarily have you got ryan williams to possibly close in february and then you got your portal guys and that's it so i think that's kind of how it's going to go i'm sure they're frustrated with some of the guys that they probably would have taken committing so early at least not getting a chance to talk to them see them in person but i don't think it's the end of the world i don't think it's the end of the world. i don't even think it means anything i don't think it means anything Nothing really means anything until the the portal season's over. So let's sit back, let's enjoy signing day, and let's see what happens uh, in the portal over the next few weeks. Um, we had another big, what I would call another portal, I call it a portal edition, as Rivaldo Fairweather announcing he's coming back. That's another aspect to the game. Um, I would say we're three for three on so far. You know, you've added um, – you got Keontae Scott to come back, Eugene Asante, and now you got Rivaldo Fairweather. Probably Dylan Wade would be the next one you hope to hear is coming back, which I believe he will. Um, that's just like adding a, a top guy in the portal, a big time uh, receiving tight end, our leading receiver. Y'all know how I feel about Rivaldo. I get to watch a whole nother year of him hopefully going up and, and dunking on kids uh, with another year in the system to get better. And hopefully they can continue to kind of build and lean on him a little bit more like they did towards the end of the season. So a lot of great things. Sleep, have a great day. Sleep tight. Be prepared because tomorrow's going to be electric. Tomorrow's going to be fun. And you want to have a lot of rest and, and you want to be ready to go because uh, I think we're going to have a special, special day. So, guys, I really appreciate this. This, this has been so much fun. So much fun, and the response has been great. I love all the comments, ask questions, tweet at me, uh, DM me, whatever. It doesn't matter. I love interacting. I love having fun, and I love talking about Auburn. So um, y'all have a great, great rest of your signing day eve, uh, and we'll get back on Thursday and recap everything that happens tomorrow, uh, and uh, I can't wait. So uh, thanks again. Uh, this has been episode four of the Top Button Podcast. Catch you next time.